Hello everyone, I'm Dave Thomas, and today I am building the Sport X 3-inch high-power model rocket from Mad Cow Rocketry. Now, the package does not come with an illustration, but I'll throw one up here from their website. And they advertise this as a good level 1 rocket, and I would have to tend to agree with them. This is a pretty sturdy rocket, but it's very straightforward to build. It can be built either as a engine deployed, single deploy rocket, your basic model rocket, or with additional parts, you can do dual deployment with this as well. If you do just use the single deployment, then you've got a nice payload bay that you can use for paratroopers or bugs or whatever have you, whatever you want to put in your payload section. Just don't do vertebrates. And so, like always, we're going to want to find out what's in here. So our instructions are hiding inside. There we get a black and white illustration. Okay, so inside our main body tube here, this is pre-slotted for four fins. All right, and then we can check out our parts list here. So this is a 38 millimeter uh, engine mount tube. We've got our nylon shock cord. All right, also in the bag, uh, four eighth inch plywood fins. We have a small parts package that includes the bulkhead for the payload section, the centering rings, and the various nuts, bolts, and eyelets. Okay, we've got a polypropylene nose cone. and then a coupler inside the payload bay tube here. Okay, so let's come back to this. Now, things that don't come with this, um, there's no included nylon chute, although they suggest a 30 inch chute there. Um, and I'm sure I've got one laying around here somewhere. Same for the chute protector, this is just a sheet of Nomex, and I actually make these uh, in my own shop here. So those are good. Also, this does not come with any type of positive motor retention. Um, you can fly it just this way, and you have to masking tape the motor in. That's not my favorite way to do it, but it does work. Uh, you can also use um, your own engine retainer. Here I have a couple of options. Um, now this one is not the right size, but it's made the same way. So Mad Cow makes one that's a fairly simple retainer. Um, I don't recall the price off the top of my head. I, th I think this one, the 29 millimeter, was like seven dollars. Uh, I think the 38 is probably around ten, but you can check their website. Uh, this is a polycarbonate motor retainer. It's a threaded one. I got this one from Launch Lab Rocketry and it runs about $18 and it's pretty good, especially for rockets that um, have a substantial change in diameter between the body tube and the uh, motor mount tube. If this were like a, a two inch or two and a half inch uh, body tube, it gets a little tight in there, right? but this should fit nicely. So when it's inside there, there's still plenty of room and the, the retaining nut does not um, extend out beyond the body tube. And that's the main thing I look for with this. I've got some uh, 2.6 inch rockets that have these on it and they look great except these protrude out beyond the body tube. That shouldn't be a problem with this one. Okay, There are also aluminum uh, motor retainers out there. Uh, so whatever you like. Uh, we will talk more about that later on when we fit the motor mount tube into the centering rings because some of these retainers require more extension of the motor mount tube than others. All right, well, it looks like we have everything here. I'm going to clear most of this away and we will get started building. I just made a serendipitous discovery here uh, because remember in our instructions, it said that a motor retainer is not included in the kit, but I found it underneath the bulkhead in amongst the other hardware parts here. So this is the, the kind of standard Mad Cow motor retainer. Um, and I will go ahead and show how to use this one. 
uh, with this kit, um, and then you can also, you know, as I said, you have the option of using the other one. Now, some other things that they show in the instructions here that you'll need. Um, one of those is going to be epoxy. So, because of the higher thrust involved with high power rocketry and also the higher temperature of the motors, um, white glue and wood glue don't really work too well, especially in applications around the motor mount and around the fins. So you're going to want some epoxy. Now they show five minute epoxy here. If you've never used epoxy before, um, I would suggest using a 15 minute epoxy. It gives you a little bit more working time, uh, though it does take longer to set up. Um, with five minute epoxy, you do have to be careful as it, it does, it's, it is exactly what it says. You've got about a five minute working time and then it sets up pretty quickly. So if you're new to epoxy, one, I would just try mixing some up and, and see how it works. Uh, but then also two, you may want to use a 15 minute epoxy. Maybe in some circumstances, maybe even a 30 minute. Okay. Now I will show a couple of places where it's okay to use wood glue, but if you've already got the epoxy, you may as well use that. There are also a few cases where we may, may need some cyanoacrylate glue or uh, super glue, crazy glue, it's all the same thing. Um, usually you'll want both a thick gel type consistency glue and also the regular more runny type. Um, and you'll use those for different applications. Okay. Um, sanding sealer or filler and paint, these are all going to make your rocket look better. Um, you can fly a naked rocket if you like. I've seen several people do that for their level one certification where they just didn't get it done in time to paint it before their launch window came up. Works perfectly, just may not look as good. And then finally we're going to need some sandpaper of a variety of grits. Um, they recommend somewhere between a 120 and a 220. That's kind of good general purpose grits. Um, there are some areas where I may show that uh, a coarser grit or a finer grit may come in handy. We're going to start with prepping the motor mount. And something we need to do is take off this glossy surface here. Now you don't have to strip the whole thing. Uh, but here you can use some 100 to 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, some people like to use even coarser sandpaper, but essentially what we're doing here is we're just taking this glossy surface, the smooth surface down, and give a rougher surface for the epoxy to hold on to. So here I have some 150 grit sandpaper handy. I'm just going to use that. And since we don't know exactly where the rings are going to go, we'll just do the whole thing. Now I am going to try and leave the very aftmost section here clear and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of measure. Well, let me, let me put it this way. If you're going to use a motor retainer like this that has to attach to the tube, go ahead and sand it. All right, if you're going to use the masking tape method where um, the motor would go up against this and then you masking tape around both the motor and the tube, then I would leave this clear at about half an inch or so. Uh, is that way the masking tape can peel back off readily without stripping off the whole layer there. Okay. Now I am going to use a motor retainer like this, so I'm going to go ahead and sand all the way around here. There we go. And again, it doesn't have to be deep. Um, we just want to take that glossiness off there. All right, next we're going to get into our small parts bag here. And for now, we just need the two rings here. Okay, so the one with a single hole is going to be the forward ring. The one with the double holes is the aft ring. Now, those double holes can be used for the 
um, engine retainer if you're going to use the Mad Cow version that just has the, the kind of ovalish ring there. All right, and these are actually really loose. So we don't have to worry about sanding them. Um, so now what we want here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do actually now is write on this so I don't get these mixed up. All right, so this is the forward end. It's actually an R, not a V. All right, and down here, this will be my aft end. I'm going to write on the inside for that. All right, so if we come to our instructions here, okay, and we're going to leave on our forward end about half an inch exposed there. Okay, so we'll just take our ruler, all right, measure back to about half an inch. I'm just going to make a mark here. Okay, and now it has this um, spreading some epoxy on there. Now on this one, all right, it also shows that we should um, leave half an inch of the aft end exposed. But to uh, make sure that our aft, uh, aft section here, so that exposed section is large enough for your engine retainer. So if you're going to use the masking tape method, um, go ahead and do that. If you're using an actual engine retainer, use that to make your mark. All right, dropping it on the floor is optional. Okay, so here, make sure I'm on the aft end. I'm just going to put that on. And then I'm just going to draw around it. I'm using a Sharpie, but you can use a pencil as well. Okay, so I need at least that much exposed on the aft end. Alright, now that wants us to do this one ring at a time. And that's fine. Now the instructions said that the motor retainer was optional. But it turns out the kit does come with one, or at least my kit did. And so this is the, the standard Mad Cow engine retainer. It's fairly simple. And so to install this one in place of the uh, screw-on one that I'm using, uh, what you'll need to do is first take these two inserts. And so what these do is they've got wood threads on the outside and machine threads on the inside. And you're going to thread this through. So in the ring that has the two holes, you simply place one of these in. You're going to need a 4 millimeter Allen wrench. All right, and we just screw these in. Like such. All right. Get them about halfway through so that you have an equal amount on each side there. And I would do that to both sides. And now you'll install the aft ring just as you would before. Um, and I would have the, the hex threads here sticking toward the aft. And when you're ready, so this when this has the motor mount in it and you're ready to put a motor in, then the motor will hang out of the motor tube there. You'll put this over the threaded parts and then run these two Allen screws into there and tighten that down so that the motor can't come loose. All right, now, unfortunately, these are not the same size as this. It looks like they're probably three millimeter or eighth of an inch. Okay, um, they're actually knurled here so you can hand tighten them. All right, and so then the motor's trapped in there. Um, something you can do to uh, make this a little bit stronger um, is you can, once you've got the threads made, get this one out. 
Okay, if you want, once you get the threads made, um, you can either put some epoxy right around here, but make sure you don't get it in the, the metal threads there. Um, or you can carefully back those out and put either some epoxy or some gel type super glue in there. And that is what I'm going to do. All right, and the reason you want to use the gel type is the runnier stuff will just absorb into the wood and it won't make a very good bond. Now I'm just using a little bit of this because again I don't want to get it inside the metal threads where it could interfere with the screws. All right, and then we just kind of gently put that back in so we don't cross thread anything. Okay, right about to there. And then we we'll do the same thing here. Right here you can try either way, but um, I'll show you two ways. The other way is to back this out most of the way and then put the glue directly on the threads. I don't know if one version is better than another, but it's two ways to try it. All right, and then once more just turn that back in and then let that dry. Okay, And then from here you can just mount this back onto the engine mount tube um, giving yourself only that half inch of clearance. And what I would recommend doing is, if you've got a motor or a motor casing handy, is go ahead and put that motor casing in the engine mount tube while you measure this, and put the retainer over the casing just like it would be in launch position. And that way you get a better guide as to how far you need to be on your motor mount tube. Now the brand of epoxy pretty much just depends on what you have available around you. Okay, so um, Bob Smith Industries is, is one that's fairly common. Um, there are others out there. Whatever you got available, it's not going to make that much of a difference here. Now normally uh, most hobbyist epoxies, you know, the stuff you get in separate bottles like this, uh, is meant to be measured by volume. But if you're using small amounts, uh, most of them are also compatible with measuring by weight. If you're using a whole lot, like 20 grams or more, or 20 milliliters or more, then it's best to actually use volume. Uh, because the, there is a difference in density between the two um, parts here, the resin and the hardener. But in small amounts, um, you're within normal tolerances. And so I find it easy for this to use a, a small digital balance here. And this little tray I'm using is called a weigh boat, and you can get it from scientific supply stores. You can also get them from Amazon. Right, I'm just going to make up about two grams of each. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to be close. Right, overshot a little bit there. Okay, and then here I'm going to add the same amount. So if, if I get it straight on, I'll end up with about 4.2 grams here. And the main thing is when you're storing this stuff, don't get any of it mixed together. Now I'm going to mix this up, and I'm using a popsicle stick here. Now note that I'm wearing gloves. Um, epoxies with repeated exposure can cause allergic-like reactions. Um, they're also very sticky, so it's just best to protect your hands here. All right, now I'm doing the forward ring first. And I'm just going to mix this up for a, about a minute or so or in, until it looks pretty uniformly mixed. And I've also got some extra paper towels down here so that if I spill or slop any of this, it doesn't get on my nice cutting mat. All right, and I am doing the forward one first, so I'm going to start by putting it fairly forward, and then I'm going to push the ring through it. Yeah, 
See, there's some globs coming out there. All right, so I'm going to smooth that around. Now remember here we want the one with just one hole in it. So I'm going to put that on. Right, and I'm going to find that mark. And that's about where it needs to go. All right, and then I'm just going to try and keep this nice and perpendicular. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my aft ring here as a support. Now I'm just going to let this set right there. Okay. And then if you have some extra epoxy, if you want here, you can uh, add some more to the other side over here. Kind of make a fillet. It doesn't have to be pretty. But just to add some more reinforcement here. Because some high power engines, even the H's and the I's can put out a lot of thrust, so you don't want to have weak spots here. All right, so once again, then I'm going to readjust this, try and keep it as perpendicular to the tube as possible. All right, and now I'm going to let that harden. Since I'm using five minute epoxy, this shouldn't take very long. While we're waiting for the epoxy to set up. I want to bring our attention to the nose cone here. Now, polypropylene gives us a very tough nose cone, but it's molded in two halves, and we've got a definite seam that goes all along the length here. And part of that seam is raised, and part of it is recessed. Um, and this has actually got four seams on it. Just notice that. Usually they just have two. Okay, so we're probably going to want to smooth these down a bit, but then also the polypropylene, um, it does not hold paint very well. It tends to be fairly repellent of other chemicals, which is why it's used a lot, um, but it means we need to prepare the surface for paint here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just run uh, some 150 grit sandpaper all over this, and especially concentrating on the seams here, and try to even those out. Okay, so it's very noticeable that it's roughed up the plastic here. All right, but you can also see that most of the seam is now gone. There's still a little bit here where there's a valley in the plastic, um, and a little bit here the same way, but most of the ridges now have disappeared. And we'll come back to these valleys here in just a moment. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is finish sanding all the areas in between, again using the 150 grit sandpaper. So here I've worn down most of it. There's just a little teeny tiny groove, and I think that'll get hidden when we prime and paint this. Right, but right now, this is all looking very rough, and it has what we call a tooth to it. It gives something for the paint to adhere to. Now, I'm not just going to do this directly like this and put paint on it. You can, um, and a lot of the paints out there now say that they work on plastics. They don't work well on polypropylene unless you do this, but I am also going to treat this with, with what's called a universal bonding primer, and it is specifically made to bond dissimilar types of surfaces like polypropylene to paint. Um, and it kind of does what I just did here. So 
not only does it grip onto the toothiness now of the sanded plastic, its own finish is a little bit rough. Um, and so it gives a little more tooth for overcoats to hang on to as well. And so typically what I will do with these types of nose cones is do the sanding that I just did, give it a coat or two of that universal bonding primer, do a really light sanding on that, and then coat it with um, whatever primer I'm going to use next. So if, it's, if the scratches are still prominent, I will coat it with uh, a filling sandable primer. And both of those, the universal bonding and the filling, fillable sandable primer, um, often you'll find that in the automotive department of your local department store. Um, they may not be in with the rest of the spray paints. Both Rust-Oleum and Krylon make versions of both. And so just whatever you have locally, I'm not trying to advocate for one paint over another, just what I can get. Okay, and then once you've got your, your sanding primer on there, um, then I would add the overcoat of whatever your color is going to be. Okay, Okay. so we're going to check this now. It's still a little bit tacky, but it's not going to move on us, so that's good. You can see where it's kind of flowed around here a little bit and onto the paper towel, which is why I have a paper towel there. Now, on the aft one here, remember, um, at least on my model, I need at least that much sticking out, so about where that is. And I am not going to immediately glue this side. Okay, so I'm going to put the glue right along the line there and push it on. Uh, but I'm not going to put a fillet on this the way I did this one. And the reason for that is I want a nice smooth edge here when I put my motor retainer on so that it glues on straight and perpendicular to the uh, ring here. And when I do that, then at the same time, that will also form the fillet on this side of the ring. So it's, it won't be that I won't have a fillet, I'm just not going to do it now. As before, I'm going to use the five minute epoxy here. I'm going to use just a little bit less, probably about a three gram total. So one and a half grams of each part, roughly. Got a little bit more there, but that's all right. It's not critical. Okay, so once again now, I'll move that to the side. I use my same stick. It's got epoxy still stuck to the paper towel there. All right, so I'll use the other end. Okay, now as I mentioned here, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I did the forward ring. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this right on the edge of the line there. And I could go ahead and mount the engine retainer right after I do this, but I prefer to wait till after I get everything painted. That way I don't have to worry about masking off the retainer ring. And it's also easier to fix things if something goes sideways along the way. Which seems like it always tends to. Right, so now I'm just going to put this up right until I get to my line. Right, make sure I'm straight with my line all the way around. This is an alternate motor mount here um, from another kit, of the same kit though, and this one I've set up specifically to use the Mad Cow motor retainer. And so I've got the epoxy setting here and what I did to, to find the proper uh, mounting uh, spot here was to just take a, an old high power motor here and put that in and then I put the screws in um, and I made this distance from the centering ring 
just long enough so that when the screws are inserted, they just come out the other end of the screw mounts there. Okay, so where the instructions show half an inch for this, um, I'm actually using about a quarter inch when using the Mad Cow motor retainer. In preparation for priming the nose cone, I'm going to mask it off at the shoulder. And I'm going to do this in two steps. So first I'm going to use this relatively fancy masking tape that's supposed to be really good at sealing out paint. Well, it's mainly latex paint. It works okay for this. I'm just going to do a circumference of the shoulder right along the edge of the nose itself. And now I'm going to take a piece of cardstock here. Now you can just use paper. I'm using cardstock because it will allow me to stand the nose up on it. Okay, so once I've got that fitted there, now I can use the less expensive masking tape just to hold it in place. All right, and there are some ridges on here. They're kind of like pressure rings. Um, and so that will make things a little wobbly or can. All right, but now I've got that wrapped all the way around. And we use a little bit more masking tape here to hold that. And then now I'm going to use one more long piece. That's not it. Okay, and here I'm just going to wrap this around the edge again. So I really don't want paint down on the shoulders. I'll probably end up having to sand it off once more. Okay, and just for some extra strength, I'm going to go ahead and tape my cardstock together along the seam here. Okay. Uh, but that it won't fit under the camera now. But now I can stand this up as the paint's drying um, and not have to worry about it flopping over or something like that. So I'm going to take this over to my paint hood and we will start priming this. And while the primer is drying, we'll come back to our motor mount. As you can see, um, as we were looking at motor retainers there, uh, the motor mount is pretty much done. Let's scrape off this little bit of epoxy that goobered its way down to the edge here. Okay, so my epoxy is still a little bit soft. I just need to be careful as I handle it here. I am going to straighten that just a little bit. Okay, so um, we have two eye bolts. One of those is going to go to the payload section. The other one goes to the shock cord mount. All right, we've got two nuts and two washers. Okay, and then the rest of the hardware that's in here is for the... Um, rail button mounting and we'll just set those aside for now okay now one set of the eye bolts I am also going to set aside because we'll do the the payload section later all right this eye bolt is going to go right in here and then we're going to fasten fasten it on the other side through here um, if we put this in like this, so it's all the way down, and we have a blob of epoxy, it effectively seals the eyelet there. Okay, And there, there are a whole bunches of high-power rocketeers who won't even use these things. They'll use forged eyelets um, where there's no gap in here. Because theoretically, if you get a, a hard enough jerk on your recovery system, this can open up. All right, for this rocket, this is probably way more robust than we actually need. Okay. Okay. So here we're going to have to make up a little more epoxy. For this one I'm going to just approximate it. I'm not going to make a whole lot. I 
If you don't have a little balance, this is how you do it most of the time anyway. Okay, now this is 5-minute epoxy again, so I'm going to have to work fairly quickly. All right, so I'm going to put some epoxy in the hole itself. All right, and a fair amount on the forward edge here. Okay, now when this goes in, you have to make sure that it is parallel to the ring, not perpendicular to it. You want you don't want it like that. You want it um, running with the edge. Okay, and we've got whoops. I have to be really careful here as I'm not wearing my gloves. I'm going to put a fair amount of epoxy down here because that washer may come in at a little bit of an angle. Now, if you really want to be obsessive about it, you can actually go in and sand down the epoxy on the uh, fillet that we made there so that this sits flat. Um, I'm not quite that OCD. Right, and then kind of the remaining stuff here we're going to put on the, both sides of the washer and on the threads so that when the epoxy hardens it's going to lock all this hardware into place. Right, so now we're going to thread the nut on there. Right, and yeah, I really should be wearing gloves. Now, something you can do if you get epoxy on your fingers while it's still gooey, you can take it off with rubbing alcohol. Okay, so we've got that there, and now I'm going to use a wrench to finalize tighten that. Okay, Right, now with the wrench, it gets that washer mostly flat, and it is sticking out here a little bit. So we'll do a test fit later on, and if that's impeding mounting the motor mount, um, then we'll just take a Dremel and grind it off. Okay, that looks pretty good there. We just want to make sure we can't see anything beyond this. Okay, and then if you have a little bit of epoxy left over, um, you can come, it's almost set up here. I'm going to go ahead and put that right in that little cleft on the eyelet. And there. And we can put a little bit down here on the threads just to help lock everything in place. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and let that solidify. And I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol to clean my wrench and my finger. Here, all of the epoxy has hardened. And so on the aft end, we've got a fairly clean edge here that'll be a good fit with the motor retainer on there. And on the forward end, we've got a really strong fillet here. It might look a little sloppy, but it's doing its job. And our eye bolt is securely fastened into place here. But as I suspected would happen, we do have a little bit of that washer hanging over the edge of the centering ring. And I just tried a little bit of a test fit, and this does interfere with the normal fit of the motor mount into the body tube. So what I'm doing next is off camera, um, I'm going to use a Dremel, you could also just use a file here, to grind this down until it is flush with the edge of the centering ring. And I'll come back when that's done. Here's what it looks like after grinding down that washer. I had a few little slips here, but it's not a big deal. 
And now I'm just going to do another test fit. All right, and that slides in easily there. That's the way we want it. When this all goes together, the two tubes are going to be flush like this. And I don't see any problem with that happening. So we can move on now to the shock cord. And this is going to tie on to the eye bolt. And according to the instructions, they're having us do what's essentially a fisherman's knot, though we have to do it kind of from the, an odd angle, uh, since we want the loop in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of stretch this all out, make sure it's not tangled up. Okay, and then we're going to pass one end through the eye bolt here. Okay, and now to tie this, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of free end here. Okay, give yourself enough to work with, so depending on how thick or slender your fingers are. Um, but here I've got a double thickness, and then I just go out to the single here. And I'm going to take this and form a knot so that the free end, the little end, goes through as well as the long end. We're going to pull that all the way through there. Like that. All right, and then I'm going to move the knot down as close as I can get it to the eye bolt. We want to have a little bit of play in there so that it can move around as needed. Okay, just like that. Get that as tight as you can, but be careful that you don't break the centering ring back there. Okay, and then we're going to make up another little bit of epoxy. And I'm going to epoxy the knot right here so that it can't come undone. Here I've made up another small batch of 5-minute epoxy. Uh, I don't need a whole lot for this. I'm just going to take this now and run it along the seams of my knot. So I'm just going to rotate this around. Now, you might be thinking, well, what happens? Is this not going to wear out, or is the shock cord going to wear out? And the answer to that depends on how often you launch it. Um, if you launch this, you know, tens of times, then yes, your shock cord is going to wear out, and eventually it's going to break. And usually what happens then is that you have to go in, remove the the pieces of it, and that's not an easy deal. And then you retie it onto it. And, uh, and I said that's not the easiest task in the world. Um, but if you go to Apogee's website, they've got a whole bunch of uh, rocket construction videos. And one of them is how to replace a high power shot cord. <clears throat> Hopefully, you'll never have to worry about it. You know, it's, I've got lots of high-power rockets. I don't think I've launched any of them, uh, except for a few research birds, more than three or four times. Just because I move on to other rockets, and high-power launches are expensive. All right, I'm going to let that harden now. And while that is happening, I'm going to look forward here a little bit. So our next task is going to be inserting our motor mount into our main body tube. And we're going to need a fairly large amount of epoxy for this. And here I recommend using 15-minute epoxy rather than 5-minute. So while I'm waiting for the epoxy on the knot to finish hardening, I'm going to come back to our nose cone here. This has had um, about three coats of the Universal Bonding Primer. And you may notice it looks kind of fuzzy and a little bit rough here. Um, and that's due to two things. One is that it's the um, particles of the plastic that were still attached there. This helps kind of lock those down and we'll be able to sand them down. Uh, but also the primer itself dries with a rough finish. And this is how it does that universal bonding. 
is that it makes a toothy surface here for the next layer of primer to paint or paint to go on here. So what I'm going to do now is off camera I'm going to wet sand this with some 220 to 320 grit sandpaper and then I'll go and take um, and add my primer to it. After wet sanding you can still see it's kind of rough in here um, and that's because I did not sand this very hard um, and I was using fine grit sandpaper for that. What I was really trying to do in here was knock down that little fuzziness from the plastics. And so now, once this is completely dry again, um, I'll put a coat or five, depending on how much I need, of the uh, sandable filling primer, and that will fill in a lot of these scratch marks. Now that the epoxy has set on the knot, we're going to gather up the shock cord here and we're going to stuff it down inside the motor mount itself. And so the trick here is getting it long enough and narrow enough that it fits in there without a whole lot of it overhanging. Something resembling this. Okay, and now we're going to put this down inside. Alright, now this nylon is trying to slide past itself here, so it's not exactly pretty. We do need it completely out of the way. Okay, so now it's hanging out back here. That's okay. Um, and what's going to happen now is we're going to be putting epoxy about five inches up, um, which is going to put it right around in here. We we can check against my ruler here. Yeah, five inches is just beyond the slots. And then we're going to push this in. Okay, um, we're not going to go all the way up quite yet. And then we're going to also put a ring of epoxy just inside here, below the slots. And then that's going to fit in like this until we get flush. Alright, and we don't want any ring visible here. Uh, and we have to be careful though because we don't want the epoxy dripping down onto the shock cord here. Okay, because we don't want to glue the shock cord to the motor mount. Now it may occur that some glue gets on here. That's not a big deal um, as long as this can still flex. Okay, um, but if this gets bent too far, it's going to limit. You know, if this can't get out of the way of the motor, this is going to limit the size of the motor you can put in. Um, an H100, for example, won't fill up the entire tube and be fine. But if you put an I in here, it's going to be sticking out this way. Let alone a J. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is make up my 15 minute epoxy. And if you don't have 15 minute, that's fine, but you're going to have to work really, really quickly. Here I've made up about 10 grams of 15 minute epoxy. And now you won't be able to see this on the camera directly. But what I'm going to do now is place epoxy up above where the slots are there. Just kind of move it along. Now because this is a longer setting epoxy, what I'll be able to do is that once I've got the motor mount installed, I can stand this upright and the epoxy will still flow back onto the rings. And they'll essentially make their own fillets. 
the trick is not getting so much that it ends up getting all over the shock cord and such. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of a run in there. It probably won't hurt anything. I'm going to go ahead and scrape it out here. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. Might be able to see inside. Don't think you can quite see it there. So right below, see a little bit there, right below the slot center, actually above from this point of view, um, we've got a good glob of epoxy going pretty much all the way around. I guess a little bit of a blank spot in there we need to hit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in. Right. And now I'm going to put some more epoxy on, not as heavily, but right, right inside here. Now I don't really need it at the edge, I'm trying, I'll probably wipe that excess off, um, but I don't want to have a whole lot pooled up inside there. So. It's going to look sloppy to begin with, but as we put the centering ring in, it should uh, clean itself up. Okay, so now we're coming around, meeting the epoxy on the other side there. Okay, the other thing we have to be careful of here is that the um, ring, right, with its bolt, See, I've got it lined up with a slot. We don't want that. All right, so I'm going to turn that about 45 degrees so there's no way that a fin is going to impact that bolt in there. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that in. I'm not going to pull that out quite yet. Now I'm going to get one of the fins. Okay, it's still got some masking tape on it, but I just need it as a test fit here to make sure that we don't have anything blocking inside there. Alright, so that should fit flush like that, and it does. It's tight, but that's okay. We're going to sand those later anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and move this up to a flush position, and I'm going to pull the shock cord all the way out so that I can do that. So now I'm going to put this up flush. Okay, and I'll bring it back down. Okay, it's trying to move on me a little bit. We'll take care of that in just a moment. All right. Um, so now we've got a nice coating of epoxy going all the way across this. There's a few blank areas. Um, and I will probably go ahead and fix that here. Um, I'm going to take a paper towel, okay, and I'm just going to run this around that inside edge there. Now notice it's pushing up into the fin slots, and I don't want that, but I'll fix it in a moment. Right, this is just going to go all the way around there, and that's going to give me a nice uniform coating of epoxy all the way around in there. Right, I still got a little bit of a blank spot. Um, this will actually help protect the cardboard from the motor blast. All right, so now I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to stand this up, all right, which is going to put it out of the camera's view here. All right, but now I've got it standing up. It's, it'll have a little gap due to the uh, shock cord there. And I am going to check down inside. Let's see if we can do this with the camera. Right, got a little flashlight here. We can look down inside there. Okay, and I don't see any epoxy substantially hitting the shock cord. And that's really what I wanted to check right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to let this set up. 
as I said, it's it's 15 minute epoxy, so it's going to take at least that long. Um, this is a good time to go have lunch or dinner or have a snack. Um, and go ahead and just let this go for a good half hour to let everything set up. <laughs>